Hello, wild ones. This is Cole Adams, and I got the opportunity to go to my friend's house today and do a art project um, based around watercolors, stamp pads, embossing. It was really cool. I'll, I'm going to show you all the parts, show you how to accomplish it yourselves. We also got to meet as a group. So about six months ago, I asked some friends in my bigger art group if they were interested in getting together and doing art like once a month together and everybody was in. So we had about six ladies there just having an incredible time and laughter and lunch and art. Okay, let's take a look. We are going to start with the Versa Mark Watermark Stamp Pad and Versa Mark Watermark Pen and some very line-oriented uh, rubber stamps. You want something that has a really open design. These are little bubbles that are very, very hard to see, but are a pretty neat stamp. And I'm just adding texture to that whole side of the card. Um, Carla calls this the watercolor surprise cards because you kind of can't see the texture you're creating till uh, the very, very much till the watercolor goes on. Now I'm using this Queen Anne's lace stamp, which has a little bit of ink left on it, so you can kind of see that one a little bit better. And then I'm going to pop a sun shape up in this corner, and that one has a little bit of ink left on it as well. Sorry about the filming. I was filming with my left hand and working with my right. There's the sun shape, and I think that looks really beautiful with that little light bit of gray in there. Now I'm with the Versamark pen, I'm making some cross stitches. That's what I think of them as, with X's, and just filling in the rest of the card with some background texture. I think these cards look especially great when you've covered the surface, surface with some textures. Now I'm going into those little bits in between the bubbles and filling them in. There's a better picture of the Versamark, and this is a hand-carved stamp um, out of an old champagne bottle lid. So I'm going to add a little bit more of a textural stamp. Now I'm over to the embossing station. This is embossing powder that's clear. And I'm just gonna shake some of that embossing powder directly over my design. And that watermark ink pad will grab that embossing powder. And I just wanna make sure I cover it so I use a lot of it and then I'll shake it off and put it right back in to the bucket. And when you how you can tell you're you're fully covered is when it almost looks like there's just like a little bit of powdered sugar or like cornstarch all over the surface. This is a heat gun, not a uh, hair dryer. So it's actually a crafting heat gun. You can find these that are shaped a little bit differently as well, but you're trying to melt that little bit of powder into a plastic film. And you can kind of see that shininess. That means it's it's heading towards um, a plastic piece. So you're gonna go in and really make sure all of this is turned over to that more strong finish. Now we're going in with watercolor. And you can really see this texture start to uh, show up. And then yet again, not great at the whole showing you the perfect set up for this but I'm doing my best with my left hand so here we go it's really starting to come you can kind of see what's happening on the surface and we're gonna get ah oh, I love those cross stitches just completely making the Versa pen really really pop out I also added some watercolor to the back side of this card, and now I've taken it to the ironing station, and I'm hitting it with a really hot iron to melt off that pen and that ink pad. 
so you can kind of tell if there's any left by a little bit of shininess. I see a little bit in mine, so I'm going to move it over. I waited for my watercolor to dry in between. And now I'm just getting that last little bit of plastic embossing powder off. We're going to come over and see Connie. There's the watercolor palettes. She is painting hers with a little bit more care and more connection to her piece. So she's taking a little bit more careful approach and I think it looks really beautiful. Um, she's going for something very uh, representational and I think it looks stunning as she's working. Okay. Now we get to my favorite part of the project where we're doing some freeform inking into what was left behind from the rubber stamp and the embossing. I really like uh, how you can kind of make it your own and make it a little bit more unique um, in this part of the process. Um, I also really loved how I could emphasize what I wanted to emphasize about each stamp or just the one. I actually ended up going just around the sun and leaving the rest to just be a little bit uh, of their own thing. I'm using a biro pen or a Bic pen. It is waterproof. If you ever wanted to watercolor over the top of this, you'd wanna make sure you're using a pen that is um, waterproof, like a Micron or Bic or any of those. And my favorite kind of line is kind of a sketchy line, those dots I added. Uh, I like a really scruffily outlining. I'm going back in with to the eyeball just to add even more detail to that. Now I'm going to go in and get all of those rays. And as I'm working on them, I really think about rotating the paper as I work. Um, instead of just rotating my hand, I think I'm working this way just because I'm filming at the same time. Um, there I go. I'm going to turn it. Yes, good, good job. Uh, when you work either toward or away from yourself, you tend to have straighter lines and more intentional lines. So I try to always work by turning my paper and not getting my hand into a really weird shape. Now I'm going to switch pens and go to a zig marker, Z-I-G marker, and I'm using the thick end, and I'm going to put a little bit of script over the top. Uh, this is not sped up. I like to go in really intentionally uh, with my writing so that it just looks really uh, strong and courageous. I always think it's, it's kind of a courageous thing to do all in one shot. And Shine On is one of my favorite Hawaiian songs. So I wanted to write that on this card. And I think I'm about done. I really only highlighted that one eye and add some, some dots around the name um, and call it good. Here is some of my friend's work. Uh, all of us ladies had ones we really ended up enjoying and liking. And the amount of work that was done in an afternoon was astounding to me. It was just, that's one of Carla's pieces. And there's Carla herself. She's the one who came up with this and shared her lovely home with us. It's just so great. Such a fun day. Seeing friends and really getting to know other artists on a whole new level. This is one of Connie's pieces. She made a cover to a little journal for her granddaughter. And then this is a piece that I worked on. Here's some of Darcy's work. She like she goes in and inks for a long time. I really love how her work looks like itself. It's so neat. 
here we are early in the day sharing some of our art and we're getting started with the process here. I really strongly encourage you, if you're a creative person, find a way to get your friends involved and just spend some time laughing and connecting and doing some creative work. I hope you enjoyed this look at our day of making invisible watercolor surprise cards. And please like and subscribe. If you like what's going on here, let me know what projects you worked on with your art friends recently. And finally, here's our finished projects are coming up, and I hope you enjoyed the process. Have a great day creating wild ones and get out there and just work. I think it's such a great way to be in the world.